Hi, welcome to I Flip for Math, MathCast Lesson 8-1, Basic Geometric Ideas. I'm Mrs. Gooding, and our quote today is by Thomas J. Watson. He was one of the early CEOs of IBM, which was a data processing company, which is like our, the beginning of our early computers. He said, all the problems of the world could be settled easily if men were only willing to think. The trouble is that men are very often Excuse me, the trouble is that men very often resort to all sorts of devices in order not to think because thinking is such hard work. And a lot of times I can see that happening in math too when it looks like a problem's too hard, you don't want to take the time to figure it out, but I'm proud of you because you're working harder every class period to push yourself further and taking risks and I think it's great. Our learning goal today is to use geometric terms to describe locations and parts of space. So there are your learning goals. There's a picture of Mr. Watson with one of his early data processing machines, and that's his son on the cover of Time Magazine. Make sure you read through your learning goals. Those are the things you need to know by the time you finish the lesson. So here is our vocabulary. Uh, one of the things about Mr. Watson is that in every important room at IBM, he had the word think written somewhere, just like on that picture on the very beginning of the video. Um, so. I have got the word think on every slide, so see if you can find it. And we are going to actually do some drawing. You have this vocabulary already written out. Now I want you to pick up your pencil and um, go ahead and draw and write what I draw and write. Okay, so as we are looking at our vocabulary, next to the word point, which is an exact location in space, we are going to draw a point. And we name a point by putting a capital letter next to it. So we'll like name this point C. And um, all lines are just made up of tons and tons and tons of little points. So um, as you're looking at the lines and line segments and the rays, just know that they're made up of all of those little points so tiny that you can't even see them. A line is a straight path of points that goes on forever in two directions. So when you see a line, I'll try, I realize that's not a straight line, but it's pretty good for with the bamboo tablet. Oh, those arrows are bad too. This is a line. You can see it's going to have arrows on both ends. It always has arrows on both ends. And we can name two of those points so that we can name that line. So let's say we name this point this would be point A and this would be point C. So when we name this line, we would name it line. This is the symbol for line, a line with an arrow on either end. A, C, because we're putting the names of the two points underneath. We could also name this line C, A. Because it goes on forever in both directions, there's not a beginning or an end, so we can use either order to name our line. A plane is an endless flat surface. I want you to think about like the surface of your desk, how it's flat. Then just picture that flatness continuing on forever. That's a plane. Just that endless flat surface and there are planes in all different directions. We identify a plane to draw something a little bit like our desk. It looks a little bit like a parallelogram. That is really terrible. Let's try that again. My drawing skills are definitely not great tonight. You'll be glad to know that I actually filmed every one of these, all four of these lessons last night, but my microphone was on mute. So um, I'm refilming tonight. So this is a plane and you would identify a plane by if there are three points in that plane, then you would name them using those points like A, B, C and you do that plane figure right in front of it. So this is the, also the symbol for plane, plane A, B, C. Um, a line segment is a portion of a line or a part of a line. We identify a line segment when we draw it by having two endpoints. It begins at one of these and ends at one of these. So we could still name them. We could name them A, C, just like we did before. If we go back up to our line drawing, if you are only talking about the section of the line between points A and C, then you would be talking about that line segment. But because we have arrows on that line, we know it goes on forever. But this is a line segment, a part of a line. And when we name it, we actually, I am terrible tonight. We draw a line 
with the names AC underneath it. We could also draw a straight line with CA underneath it. Those are names for the same line segment. There are no arrows. That's how we know it's a line segment and not a line or array because there are no arrows on it. But when we draw it, we would see the endpoints there. Okay, we just don't do that in the symboling. Array has, is a part of a line that has one endpoint. Here's the one endpoint and goes on forever in the other direction. We can still name it using those points, A and C, point A and C, but it begins on this side. So if we were naming this one, the symbol for array always has the arrow pointing to the right, but wherever it begins, in this case, it begins at the end point, A, and goes on forever through C. If we had a ray that looked like this, let's say this was D and E, our symbol over the name would be the same, but because this is the endpoint where our ray begins, we begin with the D and the E in this order, and it would have to be written in this order to show that it begins at D and goes on forever through E. When I'm trying to remember what a ray is, I think about the sun. Like when we draw a picture of the sun, we draw its rays coming out all over like this. Well, this would be a great illustration of your end point and your arrows are the rays going on forever in that direction. But they all begin at the sun and then go on forever in the other direction. Parallel lines. Parallel lines are two lines that never cross. No matter how long the lines were, they would never cross. And if I measured from here to here, and from here to here, and from here to here, it would always be the exact same distance apart. Now, the reason I love the word parallel is because there's a picture of parallel lines right in the word. So if you forget what a parallel line is, you just have to look inside the word at those two L's. They are parallel to each other, and I love that. The symbol for parallel, let's say we name these. Let's see, I'm gonna name this A, B, point C, and point D. So this would be line AB. There's my line symbol, and AB. I could have also named this line BA, but I'm gonna name it line AB right now. And my other line, CD or DC, the symbol for parallel looks like this. So if I read this math sentence, it would say line AB is parallel to line CD. So that's the symbol we use for parallel, and it's two parallel lines. Perpendicular lines are intersecting lines that form square corners. If your teacher drew straight lines, they would be square corners. So a, the corner of a square could actually fit right in each angle there. They're 90 degree angles. All four angles are 90 degree angles. So when you think of an intersection that you drive through, you know that those two streets cross each other and you have to have a stoplight or a stop sign so that cars don't hit each other. So a perpendicular line would be an intersecting line that has 90 degree angles, four 90 degree angles or square corners. The signal for perpendicular looks like this. So if you were talking about two perpendicular lines, if this were line A, I have to make arrows on the ends of their lines, A, and line B. So we'll draw line AB. And this one would be line CD. There's line C and there's line D. See, so it doesn't matter where I put the point on the line. As long as there's a point there and it's named, I can use it to name my line. And line CD. So this sentence says, line AB is perpendicular to line CD. And that's the symbol for perpendicular. You can see the two 90 degree angles. Now intersecting lines could be perpendicular lines. They intersect. It could also be lines intersecting that are not perpendicular. 
You can see we've got intersecting lines, but they do not have 90 degree angles or square corners in each one. So those are intersecting lines. And to make them real lines, I would draw my arrows on them. But since my bamboo tablet is really writing kind of fat today, it probably won't help you. You need to maybe make flashcards with all of these things on it. You'll have your notes so you can go back and study in your flip journal if you want. But you don't want to forget what a point is, what a line is, what a line segment is, what a ray is. You want to remember all of those vocabulary terms and be able to use them and name them. That's important. So if flashcards would help you, go ahead and use those and make some flashcards. Putting the vocabulary term on one side and the picture and the name maybe on the back or an example of a name. Let's go ahead and go through the rest of this video. So I wanted you just to see a picture of the early computers at IBM. My dad used to work in a room that looked a lot like this. He had a deck writer just like that woman is sitting at. And the computers are those big things that looked, they, they look almost refrigerator size and they have the little circles on them. The rooms would be just filled with these giant machines and the interesting thing is that you now have as much um, power in your little iPhone as they had in that entire room of computers, the, the same amount of computer ability. So it's kind of exciting to see how things have progressed even in your teacher's lifetime and that wasn't so very long time ago even though I know I seem really old to you. There is Mr. Watson and his think sign in his, I don't know if that's his office or his library, and the word practice because you need to practice that vocabulary and practice that those names. Most of what we do in geometry will be a lot of hands-on drawing things, writing things, um, labeling things in class, building things. And so a lot of our practice will happen in class tomorrow, but I want you to have those vocabulary terms down. That's a really important step. We are going to practice a word problem tonight though, so here it is. You can see points A, B, and C lying in plane A, B, C. So you can see those. How many lines in plane A, B, C can you draw that contain both points C and B? Go ahead and pause that. Maybe hold your pencil up to it. Don't touch your computer screen with your pencil tip, but the, Using it lengthwise, you could see how many lines could you possibly draw using your pencil as the line that contain both points C and B. Pause it and push play when you're ready. Did you write one line? This pencil can be put through points C and B just one time. There's no other way to contain both points in one line. So it's kind of a trick question, but it was kind of fun to try, wasn't it? It's time to challenge yourself. Here's another quote by Mr. Watson. Develop your own initiative. Do something no one else has done. Some of you are doing things that no other fifth graders have done because you are trying to push yourself further and do more advanced math, and that's really exciting. Some of you are doing things you have never done before, and you're really proud of yourselves, and I'm proud of you for trying. So um, whether you're comparing yourself to the rest of the world or other fifth graders or just yourself, you're making a lot of progress. You're going to be writing this out. So write it in paragraph form. Don't just write sloppy partial sentences. This is part of your math skills and being able to express what you know about math. Answer the following three questions. How are perpendicular lines like intersecting lines? What is the difference between perpendicular lines and intersecting lines? And what is the difference between parallel lines and perpendicular lines? Come back tomorrow to check your answers in class. We are finishing up. You have hopefully done a lot of thinking during this lesson and we'll continue to think tomorrow as we do even more of the practice. But write down if you're still having trouble with some of this. Are you a one? You still need a lot of help. Are you a two? You're almost there. Or a three? You've got it. Write down any questions that you might have and congratulations. You have completed lesson 8-1, Basic Geometric Ideas. I can't wait to see you tomorrow.